Giuliani granted New York Magazine one of his unhinged interviews. And while speaking to Olivia Nuzzi, it appeared as though he might have been under the influence of something. In fact, the report says that when he showed up, he was wearing a suit over a sweater. Okay, so over a sweater, he wore a navy blue suit with the fly of his pants unzipped. Which it ha- like that doesn't mean he's drunk or anything, right? That yeah. happens, right? Yeah. That's an unfortunate thing that happens to normal people who aren't under the influence of anything. Okay, but the rest of the interview gives you the sense that he maybe wasn't in the right state of mind. Well, when is he ever right in the right state of mind? Look on the characterizations of him. If it was another reporter, I'd be even more skeptical because, as we've learned recently, sometimes sarcasm is not noted. But Olivia Nelsi is a great reporter. I do trust her and she does note the sarcasm when it is sarcastic. So when he talks about how he takes drugs, he's being totally sarcastic. And she notes that in the story. So on the other hand, some of the other things are just physical observations. You can make what you want of that. But I don't want you guys thinking that's the most important part of the story. The quotes stand on their own. It doesn't matter if he was intoxicated or not. The quotes are amazing and ridiculous. Now remember, Giuliani worked with some shadowy figures in Ukraine who were certainly corrupt. And what they wanted more than anything was to get US Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, fired. And so after claiming US Ambassador Marie Ivanovich was controlled by billionaire George Soros, Giuliani remarked, don't tell me I'm anti Semitic if I oppose him. Soros is hardly a Jew. I'm more of a Jew than Soros is. That's like the most outrageous thing I've ever heard. I mean, who, what? Really? At who? I don't think you're allowed to say I'm more of a Jew or more of a fill in the blank than anyone else. Uh, and I'm definitely sure you're not allowed to tell people who are Jewish that they're not, in fact, Jewish. Uh, although, on the other hand, a lot of the mainstream media does it to Bernie Sanders. You know, they uh, call him anti Semitic with a straight face, like, even though it's plain insanity. And by the way, some of those same people will say that what Giuliani said today is outrageous. They'll be right about that. And then they'll turn around and do something similar to Bernie Sanders. But anyway, yes, that is insane to say that, but it actually gets more insane on Soros. Uh, so uh, again, going back to the New York Magazine uh, interview with Giuliani, in the grand tradition of Soros conspiracy theorists, Giuliani believes the media is doing the billionaire's bidding by printing lies about him. Yet he often bungles his own attempts to discredit the media's reporting while attempting to argue that Despite what has been written, quote, I have no business interest in Ukraine, he told me about his business interest in Ukraine. That's amazing. Now, he's a mess, man. I don't know what he's doing, what he's thinking. More on Soros, he says about Soros, he doesn't belong to a synagogue. I don't know how he would know that. Okay, so very likely made that up. He says he doesn't support Israel, he's an enemy of Israel. Absolutely outrageous. That's not remotely true. Soros is not an enemy of Israel, he's Jewish. And and because you don't agree with the right wing of America doesn't mean you're an enemy of America. I don't like Dick Cheney or Donald Trump. And yet I am 100% American as is most of the people in this country. The same with Netanyahu and Likud and etc. Jewish Americans don't have to agree with the right wing in Israel in order to quote unquote love Israel. These are outrageous charges. And then to top it off, he says, He's elected eight anarchist district attorneys in the United States. He's a horrible human being. What do you, anarchist? Okay, look, I get it. There's some district attorneys that actually care about everyone in the community and not just white people. And nothing makes Rudy Giuliani angrier. So yes, they actually believe you should not oppress poor people with things like cash bail, which rich people get out, no problem at all. To them, cash bail is not an issue. So it's not about whether you're guilty or not guilty, it's about whether you're poor or rich. I can go on and on about those things, but they are not anarchists. They are actually, yes, progressive district attorneys who actually care about everyone in the community and not just the powerful and privileged that Rudy Giuliani served when he was mayor and a prosecutor himself, never cared about the rest of the community, okay? and But I'm sorry. There's actually one more level of insanity with Soros and Giuliani. He says that Soros is employing FBI agents. Wow, really? If an outside private interest is employing FBI agents and then they are working for him while pretending to work for the government, that would be one of the largest scandals in American history. What evidence do you have of that, Rudy? Now, this is the. 
I mean, I don't know. He's got to get sued. He's got this is somebody's got to stop this guy from saying madness. Other than just reinforcing what you already knew about Rudy Giuliani, what was the point of this interview? Like, no, Ryan, I guess no, no, no like I guess no, we're no. entertained by it. It's entertaining. I mean, he's um. A crazy person. He's a no, lunatic. No, but like we already knew that. How many interviews does he no, need to do? No in way, order to Anna. Prove that? No way. Look, look. The question isn't the interview. The question is what co comes as a follow-up to the interview. Because the interview t tells you that uh, that the president's personal lawyer is a total raving lunatic conspiracy theorist and and is deeply troubled. Didn't person. we already know that? Okay, but that's why I say the follow-up is important. Then. All of the Republicans that then back Trump and Giuliani, and who say, "Oh yeah, well, I mean, I hear there's things that are going on in Ukraine." Rudy says so. All of the conspiracies about how Ukraine interfered in elections are coming from Giuliani. So when Jim Jordan or Bill Barr or any of the Republicans repeat it, it is incumbent on the rest of the press to follow up on a story like this and say. You understand that that is the ravings of a lunatic mind, right? Good luck with that. Yeah. And they're never going to do it. No, That's the problem. Then they take the stuff that Giuliani says and make it 50 50 with the truth. So that's the heart of the problem, not this interview, which I think is super interesting and very revealing of the degree to the of the insanity of Rudy Giuliani. I know, but look, I don't, I obviously don't know Olivia Nuzzi. Personally, right? So this isn't about her specifically. It's a it's a broader statement about mainstream press, people who work in you know legacy media. Getting the interview is actually part of the problem, right? Because they want they want the interviews. They don't want to do anything valuable with the interviews. They don't want to do the follow up because doing the follow up means that this lunatic might deny you an interview in the future. But that's super so like that's why they don't do anything with it. And you're not look. If no, but that's to totally reason, unfair to Olivia that she's the one who got the interview and did a really, really hard interview. Like I said, this isn't about her, right? Right. But okay, so she does an interview that's very similar to what we've seen on cable news over and over and over again. It's just that this time he gave different lunatic answers. Okay, but who in the media is ever really going to hold Rudy Giuliani accountable? I've that's actually the seen question. People, I've actually seen cable news hosts, people on Fox News. Give Rudy Giuliani tougher follow up questions than the so called neutral arbiters of like what's going on in the political world, okay? No, but the thing is, that, look, we agree, and I want to give the rest of the quotes because they're also amazing. Like the, the press thinks they're being tough on Trump and his allies. They're not. They're giving a total free pass to all the Republicans that are backing these insane conspiracy theories about how Ukraine interfered in our elections, etc. Every time somebody says that, they've got all of the press in unison has to say that is not true. That Republican is lying, but they don't have the courage to say that. They say it about Trump. They, they it's easy to say, oh, Rudy's crazy, but Rudy's theories are the ones that all the Republican Party are parroting today. So the minute they parrot it, you can go back to this article or any interview he's ever given and go, you know, you're quoting an absolute lunatic. But they won't have the courage to do it. I guarantee you, they won't have the courage to do it. And instead, they won't give you the proper context, and then it'll seem like, well, some people think the Russians did it, and other things. That the Ukrainians did it. So anyway, let's give you more about uh, the rest of the quotes. So Giuliani reads his own press and sees that his friends, these sources close to him, are being weaponized by the conspirators, helping to paint a public portrait of a man unglued. These are the same concerned people who have told him to be careful with his legacy. And my attitude about my legacy is F it, he said. Okay, well, okay. that seems clear. <laughs> <laughs> At least that one's definitely true. That does appear to be what he's doing. My legacy, nah. So if you, when you read the piece, there's a lot of um, just important contextual information, and it, it it talks about what his state of mind is like when it comes to his own paranoia, trusting people around him, and so he makes it clear that he's skeptical of people and he's paranoid and he doesn't trust everyone. And so he's asked, like, okay, well, if you're not trusting of people. Why were you willing to work with these shady Ukrainian figures, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman? And so here's what he said about them. They look like Miami people. He continues, I know a lot of Miami people that look like that, that are perfectly legitimate and act like them. Neither one of them have ever been convicted of a crime, neither one. And generally, that's my cutoff point. That's all uh, it takes, I guess. You just what, said. Does anybody know what the hell he's talking about? Uh, I, 
I lived in Miami. I don't know what he's talking about. What do Miami people look like? The Miami people don't look like that. <laughs> okay, I've seen Miami people. They don't look like that. <laughs> okay, so what do Miami people look like and what does that mean? So are Miami people shady looking? I guess I'm drawing inferences from what Giuliani is saying. They're shady looking, but they're but they're actually super clean. No, yeah, I don't yeah, you're right. I think what he's saying is they look like normal people, like they don't look like they'd be criminals. So, and they hadn't been convicted of a crime, so yeah, why wouldn't I work with them? I think that's no, what he's trying I to say. No, I actually think Miami like no one thinks that like, oh, you know, because of Miami Vice and oh. do you see what I'm saying? No one thinks like, oh, wholesome people are in Miami. Right or wrong? And I, I think it's probably wrong, but like if you're saying wholesome, usually popular lore has it as like Kansas or something yeah, like yeah. that, right? Again, right or wrong. For Miami, like Miami people are shady. But I didn't even think about it like that because <laughs> my mind didn't even go there. I think of Miami people and I think like normal people. Like I don't think about criminality or anything. Nah. This guy's insane. Anyway, God. Okay. <laughs> All right, but I'm gonna quote Miami people for a long time now. All that right, guy well, looks Miami, but he could be Kansas. That's hilarious. All right, well, let me give you more. <laughs> So um, look, there have been Giuliani associates, uh, even his ex-wife who have said that he is struggling with some substance abuse problems, uh, namely alcoholism. That's what the ex-wife is saying. Obviously, we don't have any way of confirming that. However, that was uh, touched upon in this interview. And so Giuliani says, "Oh yeah, yeah, I do a lot of drugs. There was there was one I was addicted to. I've forgotten what it is. I don't know where the drugs drugs things." comes from, I really don't. The alcohol comes from the fact that I did occasionally drink. I love scotch. <laughs> Sorry, I just had like a Ron Burgundy uh, flashback. Yeah. I love scotch, I can't help it. All of, the, all of the malts, all parts of it is cigars. I love to have them with cigars, I'm a, party, I'm a partier. Okay, okay. Uh, and he also said it tastes so good when it hits the lips. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then added, is anyone going streaking? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Those are from different Will Ferrell movies. All right, and speaking of kidding, really important. The drug part is sarcastic. He does not mean he does a lot of drugs. Yeah. Olivia Nuzzi uh, said it was sarcastic. It is clearly sarcastic. The alcohol part appears to not be sarcastic. He does say, I actually love scotch. I get that one. You know, you you heard the quotes for yourself just now. So, okay, he seems to enjoy alcohol, which apparently he did either during or after or before this interview as well, because she then noticed that. Do uh, you have that quote? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, let's uh, read the that. one about his like stuff, the lips. Yeah. Yeah, well, speaking of when it hits the lips. God, gross. Okay, as he spoke, he fixed his gaze straight ahead, rarely turning to make eye contact. When his mouth closed, saliva leaked from the corner and crawled down his face through the valley of a wrinkle. He didn't notice and it fell onto his sweater. Oh man, it's, look, that's devastating. Uh, but at the same time, guys, it is, look, to me, if that was the only thing in the article, then I'd say it's wildly unfair, right? Because I we weren't there, we don't know what this he was that because he was drinking or not drinking, etc. But given the context of all the other things he's saying, that then becomes the most believable thing you've ever heard in your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, going around Soros has F people that work for him at the FBI and is not a Jew, and and the and the Miami people and the Sacramento people. There were no Sacramento people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but all right, uh, last two things here. David Holmes is the diplomat that overheard uh, Gordon Sunland talking to Trump. He testified about it, it was really important because it connects Trump to withholding the aid in Ukraine. Uh, he said about uh, Holmes, and none of this is true, so I don't want to uh, help his scandalous and, and libelous and slanderous behavior, etc. But it gives you a, a, a sense of his mindset. He said, that guy that overheard the that telephone phone call, anybody check if the guy has an earpiece? Uh, maybe he didn't have it, how old is he? How old is that guy? He's middle aged, totally normal. Anyway, here's the crazy part. How do we know he isn't a paranoid schizophrenic? How do we know he isn't an alcoholic? Jesus Christ. Uh, because no one has ever charged that at all and there's no evidence of it even remotely. But by the way, said the guy who people are worried is lost his mind and might be an alcoholic. All the Republicans ever do is projection, right? Mm -hmm. So, but smearing people that are career diplomats that worked in the Trump administration, no hesitation at all. 
Who cares? We're smearing everybody, right? Why not? I'm surprised you didn't call him a Miami person. Okay, and the last thing is, they're now driving Giuliani's SUV. Giuliani sees this couple on a bench. And he's like, see, when back when I was mayor, we would have cleaned that up. So those, look at those poor homeless people. And he didn't mean it in a bad way. He's like, we would have gotten them help. I would have called in, uh, hey, that's fifth between 70. He's like, uh, 75, 76, he can't tell. It doesn't matter, it's not important, okay. Mm-hmm. And Nazi says at the end, the couple on the bench did not appear to be homeless. <sighs> I mean, man. Look, if, okay, forget the media, right? Like, I, I have zero faith left in mainstream media, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, so forget about them for a second. Let's think about Democratic leadership for a second and how they have single handedly bungled this impeachment process, right? We've talked about it over and over again on the show. But if I were Democratic leadership, you know what I would do with an article like this? I would put it in my back pocket arsenal to attack Republican senators who vote in favor of exonerating Donald Trump, right? I I would be like, oh, I would have a nonstop campaign against those Republican senators. They're enabling a criminal. Look at the kind of nonsense, look at the kind of substance abusing lunatic uh, our criminal president had hired as his personal attorney, and you have Republican senators enabling that. This is the leader of the free world. This is the most powerful man in the world, and this is what he's doing. This is the kind of person he employs. Like, how come they don't understand how to play hardball? Why, why? They do with progressives, but they, but it is incredible how soft and weak the Democrats are when it comes to Republicans. The president's last lawyer is sitting in jail for a crime that he committed with the president. Yep. And they didn't even charge him of that. Right. And now his new president lawyer, who is not his former lawyer, it's his, this is the president's current lawyer, is a clear raving lunatic. And so, and yet we're having legitimate conversations about whether Trump is right or he's wrong. No, they're totally mentally unbalanced. They should have been talking about the 25th Amendment, even if you didn't believe it. And I very much believe that the 25th Amendment should have been used earlier. I think the president is totally mentally unbalanced. Okay, but even if you didn't believe that politically, you should have been talking about that because the guy's insane. Stop treating him like he's legitimate, and 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 maybe you could have won any of these. My God, they're losing public debates from time to time to a guy who has lost his mind and who, as a lawyer, who's even dumber than he is. They're, I mean, they're losing to Dumb and Dumber. It's yep. this is a damning test testament to Rudy Giuliani. Donald Trump, who has hired him and still maintains that he's his personal lawyer through all of this insanity, but it's also a damning indictment of the Democratic Party that they haven't put these guys away yet. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.